<laughs> Our next reader is Sarah Santillis, who is a Haley-based writer, teacher, critical theorist, scholar of religion, and author of several books, including Breaking Up with God, A Love Story, and her most recent book, Draw Your Weapons, which I can personally testify is wonderful and everyone should read it, won the 2018 Penn Award for Creative Nonfiction. So welcome, Sarah. It's Thank you for being here. I played tennis this morning too, <laughs> at Gravity actually. I'm taking a tennis clinic and I'm playing with middle school girls and I'm winning and I feel awesome <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, so I have to say when I walked into this building, I haven't been in the new library for a long time and it made me cry uh, to see this powerful and holy space dedicated to stories. Um, we need stories now, big and small. Um, I was a scholar of religion. I guess I am a scholar of religion. I was almost ordained as an Episcopal priest, and then I realized I didn't believe in God, which turns out is a job requirement. Um, but when I was um, getting my doctorate in religion, my professor, Gordon Kaufman, who's a theologian, he um, used to say that the God in Genesis is a poet and a sculptor. And he would say that doesn't tell us much about God, but it tells us what those writers thought about artists. They knew their work was world making. So I'm gonna share with you two books today. Um, Carter asked me to pick a book and I picked two. And next time I'm invited to this, I want funny stories about me before I read <laughs> Carter. So I better be funny in the next few years or something. Um, but uh, so I, I chose two, but I really think they're about the same thing. They're about the power of art, of relationship, and of imagination. And I'm more convinced than ever in these really challenging and violent times that art can help us repair the world and that that is holy work. A sentence, a handmade bowl, a garden, a painting, these all show us it's possible to make something new. They remind us that the world is made and can be remade. So the first I'm gonna read, the first pages I'll read are from Raymond Carver's short story, Cathedral. I don't know if you've read it, but it's magnificent, and I've returned to it again and again. Um, the setup, you have to know the setup because otherwise you won't know what's happening, is there's um, a couple, and a married couple, and the woman's friend has come to see her, and he's blind, and they um, share a meal together, and the woman falls asleep, leaving the guest and uh, the woman's husband watching television. And on television comes a show about a cathedral, and the man who's blind asks the other man to describe the cathedral to him. And this is where I'll start. You'll have to forgive me, I said, but I can't tell you what a cathedral looks like. It just isn't in me to do it. I can't do any more than I've done. The blind man sat very still, his head down as he listened to me. I said, the truth is, cathedrals don't mean anything special to me, nothing. Cathedrals, there's something to look at on late night TV. That's all they are. It was then that the blind man cleared his throat. He brought something up. He took a handkerchief from his back pocket. Then he said, I get it, bub. It's okay. It happens. Don't worry about it. He said, hey, listen to me. Will you do me a favor? I got an idea. Why don't you find us some heavy paper and a pen? We'll do something. We'll draw one together. Get us a pen and some heavy paper. Go on, bub, get the stuff, he said. So I went upstairs. My legs felt like they didn't have any strength in them. They felt like they did after I'd done some running. In my wife's room, I looked around. I found some ball points in a little basket on her table. And then I tried to think where to look for the kind of paper he was talking about. Downstairs in the kitchen, I found a shopping bag with onion skins in the bottom of the bag. I emptied the bag and shook it. I brought it into the living room and sat down with it near his legs. I moved some things, smoothed the wrinkles from the bag, spread it out on the coffee table. The blind man got down from the sofa and sat next to me on the carpet. He ran his fingers over the paper. He went up and down the sides of the paper. The edges, even the edges, he fingered the corners. All right, he said, all right, let's do her. He found my hand, the hand with the pen. 
He closed his hand over my hand. Go ahead, bub, draw, he said. Draw, you'll see. I'll follow along with you. It'll be okay. Just begin now like I'm telling you. You'll see. Draw, the blind man said. So I began. First I drew a box that looked like a house. It could have been the house I lived in. Then I put a roof on it. At either end of the roof, I drew spires, crazy. Swell, he said, terrific. You're doing fine, he said. Never thought anything like this could happen in your lifetime, did you, bub? Well, it's a strange life. We all know that. Go on now, keep it up. I put in windows with arches. I drew flying buttresses. I hung great doors. I couldn't stop. The TV station went off the air. I put down the pen and closed and opened my fingers. The blind man felt around over the paper. He moved the tips of his fingers over the paper, all over what I had drawn, and he nodded. Doing fine, the blind man said. I took up the pen again, and he found my hand. I kept at it. I'm no artist, but I kept drawing just the same. My wife opened up her eyes and gazed at us. She sat up on the sofa, her robe hanging open. She said, what are you doing? Tell me, I want to know. I didn't answer her. The blind man said, we're drawing a cathedral. Me and him are working on it. Press hard, he said to me. That's right, that's good, he said. Sure, you got it, bub. I can tell. You didn't think you could, but you can, can't you? You're cooking with gas now. You know what I'm saying? We're going to really have us something here in a minute. How's the old arm, he said. Put some people in there now. What's a cathedral without people? My wife said, what's going on? Robert, what are you doing? What's going on? It's all right, he said to her. Close your eyes now. The blind man said to me, I don't know why this cries. This political landscape makes me emotional. Close your eyes now, the blind man said to me. I did it. I closed them just like he said. Are they closed, he said. Don't fudge. They're closed, I said. Keep them that way, he said. He said, don't stop now. Draw. So we kept on with it. His fingers rose my, rode my fingers as my hand went over the paper. It was like nothing else in my life up to now. Then he said, I think that's it. I think you got it, he said. Take a look. What do you think? But I had my eyes closed. I thought I'd keep them that way for a little longer. I thought it was something I ought to do. Well, he said, are you looking? My eyes were still closed. I was in my house. I knew that. But I didn't feel like I was inside anything. It's really something, I said. So the funny story Carter can tell about me is that I cried during Lit Walk. So that's, that's what I can say next time, reading Raymond Carver about Cathedral. But I um, feel especially moved because I'd chosen beloved Toni Morrison um, last week. And I'm sure we all know that she died yesterday. Um, I read this book more than I've read any book in my lifetime, and I've read her words more than I've read any other writer's words. Um, and I think that she, like the blind man in this story, shows us all what it means to not be able to see, you know, as a white person, not be able to see white supremacy, not be able to see racism in our own communities. Um, and she encourages us to act. Um, and she also tells incredible stories. So I'm just going to read a short passage from Beloved. Um, you know, I miss her. I feel the loss of her. So in this passage, Baby Suggs, who's like the minister of the story, is leading her people into a place called the Clearing. It's a wide open place deep in the woods, and the people are waiting for her um, among the trees. Finally, she called the women to her. Cry, she told them. For the living and the dead, just cry. And without covering their eyes, the women let loose. It started that way, laughing children, dancing men, crying women, and then it got mixed up. Women stopped crying and danced. Men sat down and cried. Children danced. Women laughed. Children cried until, exhausted and riven, all and each lay about the clearing, damp and gasping for breath. In the silence that followed, baby Suggs, holy, offered up to them her great big heart. She did not tell them to clean up their lives or to go and sin no more. She did not tell them they were the blessed of the earth, its inheriting meek or its glory bound pure. She told them that the only grace they could have was the grace they could imagine. 
that if they could not see it, they would not have it. Thank you.